Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's another very interesting view request video. Now, I did notice that some of the numbers that were given to us seemed a little bit strange. So I made some changes, but the way the, the uh, problem will be solved is basically exactly the same way. So the problem reads as follows. A balloon with a volume of 600 cubic meters and a mass of 500 kilograms is filled with helium. When the balloon is allowed to ascend, how high will it rise in 10 seconds? Assuming, of course, it starts from the ground and we have to ignore wind resistance and the density of the air is about 1.25 kilogram per cubic meter and the density of helium is 0 0.1785 kilogram per cubic meter. So it's tied to the ground. It's filled with helium. We cut the ropes. The balloon begins to ascend and how high will it go in the first 10 seconds? So how do we approach that? So obviously, once the balloon is untied, there'll be a net force on the balloon. It's the buoyancy force minus the weight of the balloon and minus the weight of the helium and everything else, and the balloon will begin to accelerate upward. So we have to figure out the buoyancy force. Then we have to figure out the net force on the balloon. Then we have to figure out the acceleration. And then we have to figure out the height it will reach. So basically, this is the, the plan of attack. We first find the buoyancy force, then we find the net force, then we find the acceleration, and then we find the height. So that's kind of the plan of attack. So how do we find the buoyancy force? Well, by definition, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. In this case, the displaced liquid is the air. The balloon will push out of the way this amount of air, 600 cubic meters of air. So we can say that the, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. And of course, the equation of the weight, it's equal to the mass times acceleration to the gravity. And then we realize that the density is by definition equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass equals the density times the volume. We can replace the mass of the displaced liquid by the density times the volume, and of course we still have g. So that's how we calculate the buoyancy force, and of course, this is the volume of the displaced liquid, which is the volume of the balloon. This is the density of the air, and of course g is the 9.8 meters per second squared. So, buoyancy force is equal to the density of air, which is 1.25 kilogram per cubic meter. The volume of the balloon is 600 cubic meters, and G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And how much will that be? All right, 1.25 times, oh, let me do it again, 1.25 times 600 times 9.8 equals 7,350 newtons. So now to find the net force, the net force will be the buoyancy force minus the weight. Now, was the weight of the helium included in the 500 kilograms or the mass of the helium included in the 500 kilograms? Oh, did I put 500 kilograms down? Yes, right here. So was the helium included or not? Doesn't really matter. Either it's included or it's not. So we're going to assume it's not included. And of course, you can make it equal to zero if it was. So the, the, um, the weight of the balloon plus the helium is equal to the weight of the balloon plus the weight of the helium. Now, how do we find the weight? Remember that the weight is equal to the mass times g. And in the case of the helium, the mass can be replaced by density times v. So this is equal to density times v times g of the helium to find the weight of the helium. All right, so knowing that, let's plug in the numbers. The weight of the balloon is the mass of the balloon times g. And the weight of the helium will be the density of the helium times the volume times g. So this is equal to 500 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared plus if the helium is not included we take the density of helium which is here 0 0.1785 kilograms per cubic meter times the volume of 600 cubic meters times g i'm running out of room there so i'll just plug in g there and so if we calculate all that 
So we have the weight of the balloon plus the helium is equal to, well, that would be 4,900, 4,900 newtons plus the weight of the helium, 0.1785 times 600 times 9.8 equals, yes, let's call it 1,050 newtons. So combined, that would be equal to 5,950 newtons for the total weight of the balloon plus the helium. Well, the net force then will be equal to, so F net will be equal to the buoyancy force. Of course, the buoyancy force, let's write that down on the board. I'm looking for my colored pen here. So we have the buoyancy force that pushes the balloon upward. And then we have the weight of the helium. So we have the weight of the balloon and we have the weight of the helium pulling it downward and then of course if this is bigger than this the balloon would accelerate upward which in this case it is all right so the net force will be the buoyancy force minus the weight of the balloon minus the weight of the helium so in this case the buoyancy force 7350 newtons minus 4900 newtons minus 1,050 newtons. So this would be equal to 73.50 minus 5,950 is equal to 1,400 newtons for the net force. All right, now we're ready to calculate the acceleration. We know that F equals MA, which means that A equals F divided by M. So F would be the net force of 1,400 newtons, and the mass would be the total mass of the balloon plus the mass of the helium. Now the mass of the helium would be the product of these two minus the G, right? So that means we have the 500 kilograms plus the 0.1785 times 600. That gives us another 107 0.1 kilograms for the mass of the helium. So that means acceleration is equal to, we have 1400 divided by 607.1. That gives us 2.306 meters per second squared. So that means the balloon will accelerate upward at 2.306 meters per second squared. Now finally, the height. We know that the height attained y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times t plus one half the acceleration times t squared. And notice we start from zero height and with zero initial velocity. That means that the height reached y is simply equal to this. So the height is equal to one half times acceleration, 2.306 meters per second squared times the time, and it's supposed to be for 10 seconds, so 10 seconds squared, the sec second square cancel out, and we get a height equal to, divide by 2 times 100 equals 115.3 meters. So, assuming there's no air resistance, which of course is never the case, but if it was, the balloon will reach a height of 115.3 meters in just 10 seconds. Hmm, that's quite a height in just 10 seconds with a hot air balloon. So it turns out that the numbers I was given was that the volume of the balloon was 6,000 cubic meters. That would make the balloon just shoot out like a rocket. And they made the density of the air different as well. So I went and looked it up to make sure I was looking at the right numbers. And so if we use the correct number for density of air and density of helium, and we use a more reasonable size for the balloon, we get a reasonable acceleration and a height of 115.3 meters. If you want to use different numbers, you all you have to do is plug in different numbers and work it out exactly the same way. And that is how it's done. Does the balloon lose helium when it goes up? And the answer is no. Uh, hope, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll make sure that no helium comes out. Okay, I, I thought it, was, it shot up because of the, the helium. Oh, <laughs> so kind of like a rocket, like yeah. the exhaust going out. So true, and those are much more difficult problems. Yeah. I do remember that when I took uh, graduate physics, um, 
they gave us this rocket and as the rocket is blasting off it's of course losing all kinds of fuel the mass is constantly changing and so that makes it a little bit more of a difficult problem <laughs> no like like you blow up a balloon they let go and it goes all over the place no it's not one of those it's simply the difference in the weight of the helium versus the weight in the air so helium has a lot less mass than air does so it displaces a lot of air and the mass of the helium plus the mass of the balloon is less than the mass of the displaced air so therefore the balloon will go upward you know so. the problem is because you didn't do the little high end dots at the bottom of the balloon <laughs> <laughs> so there we go the not coming <laughs> No, no helium coming out. Good point. <laughs> All right. So what, what would it be in those 6,000? Well, I worked it out that way, and I got an acceleration of like 32 meters per second square. Um, I think that was faster than the accelerator, not very far. So I figured, nah, that's probably not it. 